Hello, my name is Gary Mansfield and this is the Ministry of Arts podcast where each week I'll be speaking to a different artist. Now let's begin by bagging these bongos. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 223 of the Ministry of Arts podcast. Just before we go into this episode, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters, without whom we would not be able to produce this podcast. There'll be a little message at the end if you'd like to support us um, on a monthly basis via Patreon. But if you'd like to just support us in a one-off payment, you can go over to the Ministry of Arts Instagram profile and you'll see a link down, um, you'll see a link tree drop down box and there you can have the option to buy us a coffee and you can be rest assured that 100% of what we receive goes back into this podcast to help it grow and have the great guests that you listen to every week. But before I tell you about this week's great guest, let me just run this message by you. For the third consecutive year, we've partnered with the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week and Art Trail, where we get the opportunity to speak to several of their featured artists. And today's episode is one of those. But before I take you to meet them, let me just give you a little bit of information about the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week and Art Trail. The Art Week is, well... It's just a little bit longer than a week. It runs from the 22nd of June until the 2nd of July. And the Art Trail runs from the 16th of June right up until the end of August. And the Art Trail even has its own art bus. It stops in the location of various artworks and you can jump on and jump off at your heart's content. For the full list of featured artists and a whole lot more information... Go over to the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week Instagram page, which is KCAW London, and you'll find everything there that you need. Today, I'm taking you to meet Josephine Chime. I showed with Josephine autumn before last at Thorpe Stavris Factory Project. And for this recording, we met up at the installation site of her latest sculpture, Detangling MBS mind body and soul as was mentioned in that recording it is part of the kensington and chelsea art week and the installation site is in knightsbridge about 100 meters away from harrods itself in a newly built public courtyard called hooper's court which is going to be the new entrance to knightsbridge station and from the main road it looks like just a passageway but you can see it opening up into this big courtyard with Josephine's sculpture standing proud in the middle and the great thing about this recording is that it was recorded outside in a public area in the middle of London which I don't do enough and it comes along with all the hustle and bustle of London life and hopefully it'll make you feel like you're sitting on the seat behind us just having a cheeky little listen so please come and join me in Hooper's Court with Josephine Chimney this wall garden is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the only thing is, if you take a picture of my sculpture from the other side, so this Does it get lost? Ground, it's the sun. The yeah. sun is just so... Um, so, uh, it's the sun location, so you can't really see the artwork, but the background looks good. Yeah. But if you take a picture on this side, with the building in the, in the, as the background, you can see the sculpture better so it's kind of like one or the other yeah do you want a nice background or do you want to see the and i artwork? suppose the top of it gets lost against the red of the building yeah, exactly. as well doesn't it exactly but yeah it also depends on like how you stand so if you stand over there then it's it's kind of okay um you can see the red a, a, little, a little bit more because it's against that that building and that's, that's all just been... It looks like it's brand new, the building yeah, above, doesn't it? Yeah, it's kind of spanking you. It's been, I think it's been covered for years. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the location, so it's 
So it is located just outside the new entrance of to Knightsbridge Station. Knightsbridge Station. Yeah. And it's one of the probably one of the poshest areas in London, isn't it? It's just it is a bit. Yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting area. Well, f- first of all, let's go straight in with the first of several questions that I normally ask, mm-hmm. and that is Josephine. Yeah. How would you explain what you do to someone that doesn't know your work? Yeah, that's quite a very simple question, but quite kind of a meaty question. <laughs> because um, what I do is very, um, it's like a collage of the many different things. So I do art and I do design and I do mixed media things. So I do lots of different things. But if we're just focusing more on my uh, art practice, I um, do sculpture and I do textiles and I do painting. Anything that kind of like gets me excited. Well... What's in front of us today mm-hmm. is a sculpture or installation. Um, and we were talking just before we started recording that we was both in um, Thorpe Stavry's factory project. Yeah. And you had two installations there, or was they two parts to one installation? Uh, I had um, a big installation that was... A, I don't even know what you would call it. It was, it was a, a, mini, a mini house. <laughs> I made a mini house with um, a a red sculpture inside the house and it was called Build Your Home. Um, But in the the show previous to that, I did um, another sculpture that was, um, I can't even remember the name, it was was called Marketplace. Yeah. Sexual Marketplace. And um, it was um, totem poles that resembled my body. And again, um, mixed media textile printed sculptures that um, was kind of representing being hung on a meat rack like a a meat market. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, (laughs) but it was kind of, it was um, similar aesthetic, so maybe that's why you got mixed the two together. Um, Your art journey, how did your art journey start? Did you have, um, did you have art in home growing up? Um... Not, I mean, my parents were very much into into music. I mean, music is art, but in the traditional sense, um, not particularly. We always had a picture of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's like standard procedure. I think, I think that was definitely painted. Uh, obviously, it wasn't a photograph of Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah. But I didn't, didn't really have we didn't really have art growing up per se. I mean, I was mainly the ones just painting and drawing. I was bringing the art to the to the house. Yeah, yeah. And you just got into that at school. Enjoyed it. Did you carry on with that through to college? I was always interested in creating um, visions from my imagination and, and my in my head. I was making um, books when I was young not actual like published books but just like my own my own books and um because I had a a very intense imagination since we didn't have too much uh, distractions growing up so it was something that I didn't really have to um force it was just part of my DNA just making creating drawing um yeah didn't really know anything else that excited me apart from fashion yeah when I was young so did you go to university yeah I did I did I did um I did foundation art and design and then I did um fashion surface textiles for fashion but I was always mainly just doing all different things I think it kind of shows in my practice where I like to draw many um, inspirations and different types of tactile materials um, and detail and yeah, so it's I, I've always been interested in fashion, art and design all kind of like mixed together. So did you become a designer after university? Yeah, I was doing a lot of print design, and yeah. And art was a, 
hobby or was it part of your practice as well? It's funny because I just I haven't really thought about I haven't really thought about things like that. I always just like did art. No, that's right. So it's 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 interesting just kind of thinking about the the journey. I do remember when I was in my final year at uni and um my tutor just said to me like Josephine it's just clothes. You don't need to make a big deal or conceptual <laughs> thing out of it. It's just flipping clothes. And then another one said, yeah, I think you took the wrong degree. You should have just done art. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, great, thanks. Yeah, now you tell me. Yeah, well, it's funny because um, when I did my um, foundation, the tutors there were telling me that, Josephine, you have to apply and do a fine art and you have to and another one saying you have to apply and do art and design and I and I just had really intense um thoughts ringing through my my head from my parents just talking about you know art what's that like you're not going to get a yeah, job yeah, in yeah, art yeah, yeah. and so I kept on thinking oh, I have to do something in fashion because then I can do be a designer then I can get work and all that stuff and so I didn't apply to do um fine art even though my teacher was telling me you have to apply to do fine art, I, I just applied to do art and design and fashion. And it's so funny because it's like sliding doors because I got in to do art and design, but I didn't take it. I thought, oh no, I should do fashion. So, but then I ended up doing I ended up doing art and design <laughs> in the end anyway. <laughs> especially when my tutors in my in my degree was telling me that you did the wrong. You did the That's wrong a conflict degree. between the heart and the mind, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a it's a funny one, but I don't know what would have happened if I if I did apply to fine art or I did take the offer, accept the offer to do art and design. I'm not sure, really. I think my work is inspired by my love of um, of prints and details and textures, anyway. So, kind of like comes into what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everything that you've done has got print in it anyway hasn't it mm, yeah. even the sculpture that we're in front of today which is well if you could describe what it is that that's, we're sitting in front of at the moment yeah how I describe it so um, my sculpture is seeped in texture and detail and patterns and it's a big massive black afro comb <laughs> with engravings that I um, created myself that's inspired by um, Insipidi pictogram um, which is an ancient um, script writing from um, West Africa around the area of Niger which people call Nigeria and I made my own um, symbols that's kind of related to how I feel about myself and my body. It's like making my own language. And on top of this big, black, dark, massive Afrocomb is my body parts. I like making... Um, if you could just elaborate on that, because it did sound a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, the, the, the black um, comb is made out of um, stained wood marine plywood and um, I always like doing things out of um, textiles so I made these big massive red printed sculptural padded soft sculpture stuffed things <laughs> tied with um, but, um, red and black boating rope on top of the comb through holes drilled into the and the material's yeah. got the same, the same code or, or language, if you like, yes. hieroglyphics. Yes, exactly. It's it's because insivity is kind of like similar um, thing to hieroglyphics. It's like um, pictogram language uh, through symbols and drawings. And so I did my own version, and um, also it's printed on the the red soft sculptural. Um, shapes that are supposed to represent my my breasts and my big massive size 10 feet <laughs> yeah and on top of it is um i always do things that's got like hair in it yeah. and um this time i 
put attach some things on top of it that kind of resemble hair that's uh i like just finding random found objects and reappropriating them yeah of course um yeah and that's supposed to represent another private part of the body but people can make their own <laughs> if you come and see it you can make your own decisions of what that might be well yeah. you've used that that soft sculpture you've used it a few times in your work haven't you yes i think this is the the third time and i definitely um will continue doing it because i think it's the gift that keeps on giving because <laughs> you can kind of make lots of different things out of it and um there's something kind of like like comforting about uh making these soft sculptures kind of reminds me of like a doll or a toy or um making um a friend well it brings a different language to this specific sculpture or installation doesn't it because they the bottom half being mm. quite uh, well very dark angular and rigid yeah and then you look at the top and it's very soft yeah and, and playful yeah yeah I, I i definitely like um things that have a lot of um again t texture and detail and contrasting different um shapes and and um and materials and feelings to it um because for me i like things that kind of clash or I look like they're kind of having some conversation together um, or coming from two different worlds. Um, and the, yeah. the images that you've got on there, these hieroglyphics, if you like, they do look quite primal, don't they? As if you could have discovered this object in a cave mm. that had been you know, written or, or, or made by early man, you know? Yes, yes. And I also kind of want people to think... Um, make up their own story about the engravings that I created, like figure out for themselves what it means to them. Um, Which is exactly what I was doing yeah. five minutes before <laughs> you turned right. up when I got here. Yeah, I think it's also important to allow um, space for people to um, put, in, put into the art their own ideas and their own theories and emotions into it rather than having something just handed to you yeah. and um, also being able to look at something and discover new things each time yeah that's one of the things that I definitely um, appreciate with well if you tell art. someone if you tell the viewer the whole story then it feels like it's there's a, a divide between the artist and viewer whereas if you give them a little bit of the story to make up for themselves, then they become part of the artwork and vice mm. versa, don't they? You yeah. Know? Well, that's what I think anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think there's um, a sense of kind of collaborative ownership as well of um, the meaning of a, an artwork when you're able to kind of put your own um, spin or feelings into it as well rather than something that just seems so like shoved in your face like this is it this is what it is um, um, ambiguity I like ambiguity as well um, yeah well we should say that this um, inst do you are you calling it an installation or a sculpture I guess it's a sculpture um, I don't know some people might think it's a and it's, it's, it's definitely installed a present in uh, presence <laughs> in this space for sure. Um, well, yeah. either way, this sculpture is part of the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week and Art Show. How long is it here for? Um, I think it's until the end of August. So it's, it's part of the art trail as well. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and it is located, as we mentioned earlier, it is the new Knightsbridge entrance or exit in... Hooper's Court, is that Hooper's correct? Hooper's Court, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just opens up. You can see it from the high street. If you look down what is initially an alleyway, which opens up into this small walled garden courtyard, um, yeah, you, you just can catch a glimpse of it from the main but road. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I had to get here, like 6.45 a.m. <laughs> in the morning to make sure that I'm here with the installation tech guys so I can be able to faff around and figure out okay where is the best place to 
position the sculpture because I do I did want people to be able to at least catch a glimpse of it and be like oh what's that from the main road and walk down the alleyway yeah. I'm just to entice them into this quite nice serene little space that, that we're at so it's on this it's on the same side as Harrods it, yeah um, Harrods and if, Harvey Nicks if yeah. Harrods is on your right as you're on the pavement carry on going and it's maybe a hundred meters um, a small alleyway on the right. Who installed it? Was it MTech? Yes, Brilliant, really, really super, super great um, people. M MTech peeps, MTech guys, very patient, and they were just looking at me and like, and I, I, I was, I apologise. I'm so <laughs> sorry for like differing because I was like going back and forth, thinking, okay, left a bit, right a bit. Oh, I'm not sure, quite sure whether I want it there. Oh, can you move it there? And I apologise, and they looked at me and said, trust me, that's... Yeah, there's you, nothing. Yeah. You are absolutely fine. You're okay. We've had to, like, wait for hours before for other people, so you're absolutely fine. They were really, really super helpful. So, yeah, it was great. Well, on last year's um, Kensington and Chelsea Art Week, I was sitting with the artist recording like this yeah. as they was installing his art. Oh, wow, okay. So we'd be, um, we'd be talking like this, and then they go... And he was Russian as well. We couldn't even speak English. We were speaking through an interpreter. Ah. And um, he had very small, broken English. Yeah. And then every now and then he would go, stop. And then he would go and tell him what he wanted through his interpreter. And I would just be sitting there watching. Quite fascinating it was. But yeah, it's, uh, it's good guys. They're, yeah, I'd like to get them on here, MTech. I think I should. Yeah, some of them I think would be quite funny to talk to, actually. I can imagine you having a really good chat with them. Which piece that you've created do you think has got the strongest emotional connection? Actually, I think... Um, oh, I don't know. I was going to say Detangling MBS, but... Um, which I is the title of this. Yeah, which is the title of this one. But now I'm just thinking it might be the, the other one that was the... I would say flesh market because it was the the sculpture that kind of um, elevated me emotionally in thinking that I can actually have a happy process in making art. And I was fully proud of, I was really proud of what I actually did in the end rather than being like, oh gosh, I, this should have happened and that should have happened. And also it kind of kick-started me being a bit more ambitious with making things and experimenting. And I appreciated people's reactions. I mean, I've done bigger things since Flesh Market, but it, it, it was, um, it was a, happy, a happier process because sometimes I just tick this like tortured artist thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, things are going so bad, so wrong, and and I oh, and I didn't have too many sleepless nights because yeah. I usually like do all nighters, which I'm trying, trying to to not do and be like better with my budgeting my time. And yeah, as you can hear, there's should we wait a little bit? Okay, <laughs> so basically, London mm -hmm. life. When I was um, here installing it, we heard so many uh, ambulances or police people going past. I was just thinking, yeah, soundtrack to London. <laughs> well, if so anyone, well, when they're listening to this, it will be as if they're sat next to us, like I mentioned at the start. Yeah. Um, this is a, a question that I like asking. If there was you and five other artists, past or present, what would your ideal group show be? Do you know what? It's funny you should say that because I was talking to a friend and talking about um, being aware of your peers and who inspires you. There's some people that are like really good at just knowing art and, and just being aware of different people and movements and that like, really feeding into their work and inspiring them. But I've always been kind of like very insular like very much into like my my own thing and also i spent i spent quite a long time not wanting to know what was out there because i was so worried that it, i would subconsciously get inspired yeah, yeah. or copy by accident so i just i was inspired by 
um, objects or how people talk to each other, but not necessarily like another artist and yeah. looking at their work. So yeah, I say all of that to say that I don't really know who I would have in a group show um, living or not. Would they be artists, do you think, who have a strong visual cultural presence like this mm. like um who was in last year's show for instance being do you know zach ove mm, yeah yeah like, yeah like zach or lr vandy mm. you know that there's a very strong cultural presence mm-hmm. which your work could just sit perfectly with them i mean y- y- your answer saying yeah. that you don't take on board other artists is a perfectly valid But that's not to say that like when I go to um, 1.54 which is based in Somerset House which is a really great um, art fair from the African continent I'm like I'm always so blown away and so incredibly inspired by all of the art that I see and I'm just like wow like flowers to all of you artists but I, I I don't really like go and follow up on like find out okay who who are they maybe I should I don't know I think it would be good for me to be a bit more uh, open to seeing what other people are doing and actually have it register inside but my how brain. Would you be if you did start know. taking notice of other people's work more, mm. and then you would find elements of other people's work bleeding into yours, would you be distraught at that or would you just? <laughs> It sounds so pathetic to say yes. Do you know what's... I really don't. And that's one of the reasons why I just don't actively find out what other people are doing unless they're mates of mine or friends of mine and then I go and support them. That's really bad, isn't it? Because there are some people that I've seen, mainly like illustrators and graphic designers. Can I just say, you're not the first artist to say what you're saying. Really? Okay, makes me feel a bit better. Well, another artist that I've spoke to, Sarah Jameson as part of this Kensington Chelsea Art Week, she has designed her own language, which Mm -hmm. isn't a real language. It looks like um, Islamic text, Mm. but it isn't. Yours looks like hieroglyphics, but it isn't. Mm. So there's that similarity there that you have both made up a little language and symbols, as is your piece. So there's similarities there anyway, but you're very possibly not aware of each other's work, and that will happen all over. You know, yeah, yeah. Whether you look at artists or not. Yeah, I think it's definitely important for me to be able to um, be open to collaborating with different people. I I always like collaborating um, with different people and just knowing what happened in the, the past. I think that definitely will be beneficial for me, and I endeavour to do that because there's definitely um, giants in the past that I I can benefit from exploring and knowing more about but yeah I am um, part of a group um, called Black Blossoms and it's a very big group of um, black and brown um, women um, who are artists and and curators and that's like a treasure trove of so many different people that I've I've, I've yet to explore all of their work because I think it would be definitely food, good food for me to yeah. devour and really get into. So, yeah, I, I think I, yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite blessed to be able to be aware of that. There's so many in, really incredible artists that I could potentially like create a um, a future group show yeah. with, which I'd be so happy to do. Well, the, the benefits of looking at other artists' work is. Um, while we as artists are creating an artwork, mm-hmm. we're constantly asking questions. We don't necessarily find the answers to all of them. Every now and then, in conversation or looking at other people's work, sometimes that can trigger the answer that you've been looking for because you can see it in theirs and you go, fucking hell, that's it. That's what I've been looking for. Mm. I had exactly that same thing. And mine was when I was talking to an author bless you again thank you mine was when I was talking to an author yeah and then all of a sudden a word that he was using I was like that's what my work's about and then it just sent my artwork in a a completely Mm. different direction you know or at least it added a bit more power to the way that I saw my own work yeah what would you like to do if you wasn't an artist well I was always obsessed with fashion when I was growing up I actually wanted to be a fashion editor 
And I, for the life of me, I can't even believe that at 11 years old, or I think I might have been 10, that I even knew what that was. You wanted to be an editor at A fashion 10. editor of a magazine. When I think <laughs> I was 10, I actually wanted to do that. And I was just obsessed with, with, with clothes and creating like visuals and things like that. It's kind of quite strange. Growing up, I just realized that it's a fun, a fun world, but also kind of a bonk as well. So I don't think I'll do that <laughs> actually anymore. Well, I've got but, to ask you a question yeah. that has just come to mind. Yeah. As we were just sitting here, as you was just talking, yeah. a builder come along and lent on your artwork. <laughs> Did you see me give me an evil? Right. <laughs> Now, it got my back up as well. Yeah. But then that's where we've got to realise that once it gets put in the public realm, it's no longer your sculpture. It's yeah. the public sculpture. Yeah, it's true, so isn't how it? Did you, how do you feel when that builder... He wasn't doing anything malice. He just lent on it to take the weight off his feet for a moment. How did you feel when he just rested his elbow on it? Uh, I was thinking to myself, he better not put, like, any <laughs> fag ashtray or butts <laughs> on the work. And also, um, at least turn around and like give respect to it <laughs> before you start leading yourself up on it. That's what I was thinking. But um, also, I think I think you're right. It is going to be open to the elements of the weather and people. Now, so I've been in I've been in gallery spaces before when people have put their drinks on a plinth of a sculpture's art. Yeah. Artwork. It wasn't mine. I didn't know the artist. Yeah. But I went and asked them to take it off. Yeah. What did they say? Well, they were like, oh, sorry. Well, yeah. We just went, oh, yeah, all right then, you know, mm. or, or whatever. But once someone gave me a bit of a sarky comment and, you know, I don't care. It's, you know, they, they've no longer got their drink on there or leaning on it or what have you. And as I say, when I saw him lean against your work, I had that same sort of like the hairs prickled up my back, you know. But then I thought, we're outside. It's a... Sculpture to me and you is a, a lump of wood to that guy who may not be into art, you know. Yeah. It's somewhere that you can. And lean I think against. also, if we were to put a sign saying do not lean or do not touch, it, I, I felt like people were going to feel more compelled to lean on it and to touch. So. By the end of this, there will be cigarette ends down there or mm. crisp packets or something like that. Yeah, because I should take a before and after picture. <laughs> Before before um, London Life and then after it and see how um, people interact with it. Yeah, because as I say, this that's just an object in a, in a public space for, for most people or a lot of people. And I have a feeling that um, dogs are going to start like pissing up against it <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah. Or drunk men. <laughs> oh my gosh, like men on a Friday night after work, after work drinks. <laughs> now the bottom half to this is a is it a plinth or is it part of the artwork or is it both? You can actually slide it out if you're very, very strong. So it's separate. So to the, the bit that is going to get any damage is the replaceable bit. Yes. MTech making that plinth was such a great, a great blessing for me because I can be able to put that anywhere inside or outside. So hopefully it will find a new home and the plinth will be going along with it. And will it be made out of stone at some point? Oh, I don't know. Anything's possible. I think there's quite a lot happening with this, visually happening with the sculpture, that it can be definitely incarnated in, in different ways. I'm actually making prints inspired by this sculpture. So it would be um, possessing some of the like elements of the symbols and the shapes that will be available for people to buy. So yeah, it's definitely open for d lots of different incarnations. Yeah, stone and paper coming up soon. <laughs> I mean, it will take quite a while. Maybe soapstone? Is it soapstone? Yeah. Yeah, that could, that could be a possibility. Where can anyone find what you're doing, be it website, social media? Um, yeah, so on Insta Spam, I call it Spam because it spams people's brains and my brain. Um, it's Jack Artist, J A W C Artist, and yeah, on my website, Josephine Chime, and but you can just Googleize Josephine Chime, and it's it will come up. Now, how many people pronounce it Chime? 
my mum. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I had to go to Nigeria to uh, find out it's actually Chime. Okay. Yeah, so it's Chime and Chime. Yeah, I'm trying to say Chime more because it's I've, I've grown up it being Chime, um, but you can call me either one. It's fine. So yeah, Josephine Chime uh, and yeah, and Jack Artist. And what have you got coming up other than the Kensington Chelsea Art Week in the near future? Well, you'd have to come to a festival. Ah, oh, there you go. We Out Here Festival. I'm continuing my creative partnership with um, Brownswood and Braun Restaurants. So nice. they've got a tent called Brownswood and doing um, an art installation and set decor for their tent um, for the soundstage and the restaurant. And that's going to be quite an interesting collab. And... Um, yeah, I'm just trying to focus more on having fun in my studio, making more things that gets me excited and inviting people around to my studio. Um, and yeah, making more prints so I can be able to have a wider audience community, buy some print editions because it's always great to have people support my practice in that way. And yeah, to to what we spoke before about like being aware of of um, people in the past and the present. I really love collaboration, so I'm always open to be doing more collaborations. Collaborations are the best. Yeah. And just lastly, could you tell people again the title of your artwork, yeah. where to find it, and how long it's on show for? Okay, yeah, so Detangling the MBS, Mind, Body and Soul. Yes, and that's going to be in Hooper's Court, around the corner from the, um, Knightsbridge Station's new entrance. <laughs> yeah, and you can find my work on um, Jack Artist on Instagram and also on my website, um, josephinechimmer.cargo.site. Yes. Good. Josephine, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate having this chat with you, honestly. It's made me think a lot more about how I articulate my thoughts when it comes to my work and also how I, you know, approach being an artist. Yeah, I do want to say, because I just, I don't think I, I said during our chat, I want um, my my sculpture, the Tangle MVS, to kind of be up for interpretation but I also do want people to come away thinking that it symbolizes something to do with being free from from society's expectations of how you should be and also trying to find time to untangle your mind untangle the the aches and stresses of your body and untangle things that are like eating away at your your soul and just focus on being true to your to yourself that's the the main overarching um, theme. But I definitely um, want my sculptures and installations to be something that is like a visual feast for the eyes and also gets people kind of curious about what, what it means. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time. I think probably when you leave, I'll be like, oh, oh, I want to see this. Hello, I'm the Stylia Chilton, the director of Kensington and Chelsea Art Week and Art Trail. You've just been listening to one of our featured artists. Make sure to keep these dates for the art trail starts on the 15th of June and lasts all summer. And art week starts on the 22nd of June and ends on the 2nd of July. All of this information is on our website, kcaw.co.uk. We look forward to welcoming you. Well, hope you enjoyed that episode of the Ministry of Arts podcast. So we wasn't dictated to by advertisers, we decided from the offset to go ad-free, which means obviously we had to self-fund. So we set up the Ministry of Arts Patreon page. And without that support, we would not be able to produce this podcast. So if you like what you hear and you're able to support the podcast, just go over to the Ministry of Arts Instagram profile. You'll find a link tree drop-down box, which will direct you straight to our Patreon page. And for the price of a cup of coffee, you can help keep us growing week by week. But if you're not able to do that, that's fine because this content is free for everyone. But leaving a review on whichever platform you listen to your podcast, that really does help us get noticed and anyone else looking for an art podcast. 
or even giving us a positive shout out on your social media. Everything is appreciated. But either way, thanks for listening. And until next week, Zadar.